Doesn't he so cute? <laughs> oh. It's a cute little cinnamon bun, isn't he? Good getting internet. Um, quick update on the computing introduction. I actually have the thing client working now, and this is what all of the machines outside of the, uh, whatchamacallit, um, their various computer casings look like. So, this is my own add-on. I'll go into detail about each of these machines later, although I've already gone into detail about the Raspberry Pi, but I decided I wanted to model things up outside of a computer case, so I'm using my little Lego base, and I am going to basically build little self-containers for each of them, so I can do testing individually. This sounds like a good idea. Sweet, now on to the real vlog. Good kitten internet. Uh, Candace had, which I'll link to their video in the description, but they had done a video very similar to this, and I like the idea and I want to do the same type of thing. I'm doing a video showing you the places that I've lived and the places that I've visited. Um, unlike Candace, I've traveled quite a bit, uh, mostly as an adult, but I did a fair bit of moving around as a kid also. I've even covered this in one video. But yeah, so I currently live here, which is Madison, Wisconsin. I do have this capturing mouse cursor, hopefully. Otherwise, I'm going to have to re-record this again. So, uh, however, I was not born in the Madison, Wisconsin area. I was born down here in a city called West Palm Beach. Um, for reference, and I'm going to switch over to satellite so you can easy, more easily see this, the entire South Florida area, basically from Jupiter south to, well, Homestead, effectively, is all one giant city. You can tell from the satellite photos. There's Jonathan, Dixon, uh, Jonathan Dickinson State Park basically separates South Florida from I mean, I would still probably classify Port St. Lucie area as South Florida, but effectively this is the border of the South Florida megalopolis. And all of this area is one giant city. When you go between city to city, you don't really see differences between the cities. There's no gaps in between. It's just you might see a sign saying, welcome to Lake Worth, and congratulations, you're in Lake Worth. Um, so yeah, I was born in West Palm Beach. Uh, for a frame of reference, Donald Trump lives over here right here and for a frame of reference right over here is where my grandparents live so yeah um this uh the island of palm beach and west palm beach itself is a literal border between the haves and the have-nots admittedly some of these areas are also relatively rich like this area here but relatively over here it's more like your average per capita income is a million dollars over here, it's more like a couple hundred thousand dollars. Anyway, I was born in West Palm Beach, and I moved around a bit, uh, quite a bit even as a kid, because, well, renting. Renting means that you don't necessarily have the ability to rely upon living in the same place year after year, because rents might go up and you have to move, or uh, my parents might have needed to move for a new job, and in fact, when I was... Um, a little bit before four years old, my father took a job. He was living, I believe, over in this area. Took a job. Up here in New Hampshire. Um, his job was actually in Manchester. Uh, it was working for the FAA, so Manchester Airport. Let me switch back over to map. Since it's, um, for a frame of reference, if people are wondering how I'm able to find things so easily, my brain basically acts as a Google Maps constantly, even from before Google Maps. Anyway, um, so we moved to Manchester. Initially, we were living inside of a hotel, and then we moved to an apartment complex where I would not be able to point it out, because I was still a little too young. From Manchester, we ended up moving because the apartment complex was very expensive, and... Uh, apparently not where my mom wanted to raise a kid at. We moved up a little bit further north, up into this area, Allenstown. Um, I can probably even spot on the map where I live. Uh, let's see. Follow deer. Oh, 
it's been a while since I've spotted it, unfortunately. Ah, there it is. Oh, they even renamed the road. Wow. It's now Heritage Drive. Well, whatever. Anyway, I lived here. This is actually the house I lived in. Right here. Uh, my backyard. There is a really big hill that I used to go sledding on. I remember this. And over here is an old quarry. Oh, it looks like they actually built houses over here. I don't think those were there before. Um, this was an abandoned quarry at the time. It became a non-abandoned quarry in not very long. But, yeah, no, I lived here. It's a very tiny town. Um, Allenstown itself had a two-digit population, or two to three-digit population at the time. Now it's a bit bigger, but, yeah, this is where I lived. It's basically Allenstown's here, Suncook is here, and the two kind of merge together because they're both really tiny towns. Um, in fact, I was actually on the Suncook soccer team, I remember that, and lived here for a little while, uh, until I was about six, five and a half, five and a half. Um, went to elementary school over here, which would be, oh, I used to be able to just look at a map and tell you where, and keep in mind, I was five and a half when I left. Oh, here it is. Yep, I went to elementary school. I was about to say, I know it was on Main. Um, so, yeah, I went to school here. It was not exactly walking distance from where I lived. But, yeah. I enjoyed that area quite a bit. I know that my parents didn't really like it too much. And my father eventually... Or my mother and father split up. Um, they were going through a really rough time at the time and decided they needed to separate. Um, I actually don't have much memory of their arguments and so on, but my mother decided that she wanted to go get in touch with her roots. My mother is originally from New York City, specifically over here, which is Rockaway. Rockaway Beach is this area here. Kind of wish I would have thought about this in advance and had like a better highlight here let me i'm gonna switch over to satellite a lot more because it's easier to see things for me so my apologies um so my mother is originally from long island actually so over in this area but her memories are of rockaway uh, specifically she worked in playland which playland was in this area over here um it had since been torn down it was torn down when i even moved there but we moved to a place called Bell Harbor. Bell Harbor is the quote-unquote nicer area of Rockaway. Uh, leave it to New York City to put slums on a beach. Um, Bell Harbor was not slums. I, I should specify that. Far Rock and Rockaway Beach were slums. Basically anything from um, Cross Bay Bridge over east was generally slumish. Especially when you got to Avern and Far Rock and Edgemere. This area was really rough back then. So, um, I lived in Bell Harbor, specifically on 127th Street, which is right here, and specifically this place. Right? Yeah. This place. Not actually this house, though. I actually lived in a garage apartment. The garage apartment was back here. Uh, it looks like they've torn down the garage, which last time I looked, they hadn't. But let's see if we can do a quick street view to see. Yeah, they've definitely redone this. This was the house, but I'm guessing that um, they redid the land and sold the land off. So there was a garage right here. This is 180 Beach 127th Street, and this is 172 to... A little bit further down yeah this has definitely been bulldozed and reconstructed anyway this is where i lived i lived here for a year and a half this was dead end road where it dead ends onto the beach um the uh boardwalk which is a world famous boardwalk ends 
a block over. So it didn't take much to reach very nice, pretty areas. Uh, unfortunately, I don't really have very good memories of this place. I was very heavily bullied at the time. Uh, very heavily bullied. I had lots of friends, but this wasn't my area. I'm not really much of a big city kid. And that's kind of what you needed to be in order to deal with this place. Northeast Southwest is irrelevant when you live in New York City because, I mean, north is this way and the roads are perpendicular to the ocean. So, whatever, it's weird. Um, I went to school over here in PS 114Q. Um, this is no longer just an elementary school. It used to just be dedicated elementary, but now it's elementary and middle from what I looked up. Um, this is also the school that a plane engine fell on top of. That was an interesting event. I was a little scared because I still had, still had family that was living in this area. Um, but I would take the school bus to school. I really don't know why I would have taken the school bus to school, given how close it was. But eh, to be fair, I was six-ish. Six and seven. Um, my father eventually moved nearby. He lived over on Beach 129th Street. Did he live on 129th or 130th? I think it was 129th. He was more than a block away. Uh, he lived in a basement apartment over in this area. Let's see if I can spot it really fast. Yep. He lived here. In the basement. Or it might have been this spot in the basement. Anyway. So I lived here for about a year and a half. And then I moved again. Let's get back to normal view. Um... My mother had asked me, just seeing what Zone's doing. Zone? No! He's trying to numb things. He's hungry. It's late and it's feeding time. Anyway, um, my mom had asked me uh, roughly most of the way through the second grade, so I would have been seven. My mom had asked me if I w where I wanted to live, if I had the choice. Now, to be fair... And my mom even stated this. This wasn't my choice. She wanted my opinion rather than I'm the one making the decision. And I said I didn't want to live in New York. I wanted to live back in New Hampshire again because that's where I have very fond memories. But if I couldn't live there, I wanted to go back to where my grandma and grandpa was. Which would be back in West Palm Beach. So in order to get from New York City back to West Palm Beach, we actually took an Amtrak. So this entire distance, we had an Amtrak. This was a very long trip. I believe it was two days, I want to say. Uh, we had a sleeper car. Uh, my mom and I shared it. And I, know, I remember that we went out to Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. And then this part was kind of overnight and wake up. And it was late at night when we got down to West Palm or something like that. I don't remember the second part of this trip as much as the first part. And I remember being very bored and playing lots of card games with my mom. Uh, I got to see areas of the country that I had never seen before at the time. Or, or technically I had, I was just too young to remember. And generally my move back to West Palm is where my memories generally start. I do still have very fond memories of New Hampshire and I do have memories of New York City. But my memories truly start up at down in West Palm Beach, where, again, my grandparents actually still live there. So, moving around in West Palm Beach area. So, myself, I had lived in West Palm Beach, Lake Worth, um, Palm Springs, these three cities, basically, back and forth between various areas, constantly moving around. Um, initially went to school too far. No, this is Southern Boulevard. Here's Belvedere. Okay. So initially I went to school in Belvedere Elementary School, which this school has been torn down and rebuilt. Um, I should mention, every school I've ever attended has been torn down and rebuilt. Uh, so none of these schools are actually the way they were. They're not even pointing in the same direction back when I had gone here. But anyway, I went to school here in Belvedere, and I actually only lived... Let's see, this MD Hermosa. I lived here. This place right here. It's right on the intersection of Hampton Road and Georgia Avenue. 
And at the time, this was an um, intersection where there was a stop on Hampton Road on both sides, and Georgia went straight. Uh, at this point, it's actually a four-way stop, which is good, because there were constant accidents here, probably about once every other week. So, something I should mention, South Florida is horrible on driving. This might be part of the reason why I have so much anxiety if I'm behind the wheel. Um, there's basically constant accidents, and it was not a fun place to live. Let's see if I can get a street view. Is this taken before the stop sign, or did they not add the stop sign, and I'm just mistaken? Hmm. Hey, look. Looks like there was an accident. Or they were doing some road... I'm not actually sure. Hmm. Anyway, um, so I lived right here, this end unit here. Uh, in fact, let me go move over to here. Ah, there used to be a paving stone here. This paving stone here, I have a memory of uh, being eaten alive by fire ants because my mom was parked over here because you'll notice that there's no driveway for this duplex. Uh, my mom's vehicle was parked over here. It was a horrible, ugly orange station wagon. Cost 500 bucks. Um, and I was getting out of the passenger side and standing there waiting for my mom, but there was a fire ant's nest there, and I ended up covered in fire ants up to shin, roughly. It wasn't that bad. I got out pretty fast. I also had a friend that lived back here, but this place doesn't look the same as when I remember it. Oh, wow. It's really high up. Just noticing how high up Street View is right now. Hmm. Anyway, um, oops, did not mean to hit that. Going further down, my father had originally lived in the same apartment. Um, when when my mom and I moved down, my father followed shortly after, and they didn't really have a place to put him. So my father moved into the same spot. Um, eventually, he moved over to here. Uh, my grandparents actually owned these apartments, or owned. I don't know if they still own them. They may have sold them with retirement. Anyway, um, my father moved over to here, at least, in, and he was living there until he died. Uh I remember that this place, before my father moved in, there was a fire, and the previous occupant had died in the fire, I believe that was Christina, uh, and it smelled horrible. And keep in mind, I was living with smokers, so my sense of smell was terrible even back, eh, back then. It was horrible. Anyway, um, this is where my father lived until he died. Uh, there's at least parking spots, and my grandparents actually lived right here. Yep, this is an older picture, because that is not the vehicle that my grandparents have at this point. So, yep, image capture 2016. Yeah, that explains it. There we go. Also over here. Gnome Zone. Uh, this place, this is the house of I am Mrs. Curry. Mrs. Curry and my grandparents basically grew up next to each other and their kids grew up with each other um this is where my father lived for most of his life growing up that is and mrs curry had don curry who was her son and the two of them grew up to be best friends um his uh, one of his sons and myself we kind of grew up together also uh when i was living in this area it's not a really great shot anyway Moving away from that particular area, after going to Belvedere, um, I went to a school called South Olive. South Olive is over here. Why am I not spotting it? There it is. South Olive Elementary. Once more, this place has been bulldozed. The actual school itself was over on this side rather than over here. Um, South Olive is where I went to school, but I didn't live anywhere near South Olive. So those of you that live in the north... Oh, let me double-check time really fast. I have been recording for 20 minutes. Great. Um, for those of you that live up in the north, you're not familiar with dealing with busing. Um, busing is the way that the south use to try to racially integrate things. Um, so my elementary school was here. I lived...
here as soon as being angry. Uh, so we're at Lynn, here's Elmer. Yep. I live right here. You see how this road should actually connect over here? I lived in this house here. Uh, let's see if we can do a street view really fast. No, they do have a street view back here now. They didn't before. So I lived right here. Oh, my house thanks for playing games. Ugh. I did not like living there. There were so many bug problems and there were um they used to have more of a tree area. The trees mostly fell down back during hurricanes. But you can actually see that there's a fence over here, sort of. Um, if you went through the fence, you would reach the other road. And people were constantly running in the backyard and jumping the fence. That was their thing. That's what they always did. Because it was easier to get over to Gardenia from Almar. And I had a friend that lived right over here. So I would walk back and forth. But, well, I lived here. It's supposed to be a private area. Anyway, um, this place was kind of garbage, but I, the, up until, uh, this is the place I've lived in third longest in my life? No, fourth longest now in my life. So I lived here for three years. Yeah, right about three years. And yeah, this neighborhood, not so great. Uh, you, you'll see that as a pattern. There's a lot of neighborhoods that not so great. Um, I had friends that lived over on 43rd Drive uh, even worse area. Really, none of this area is a nice neighborhood. Uh, kids should not have been growing up here. Anyway, so yeah, you can see how far away my elementary school is from... Okay, so I'm going to put it in the bottom left-hand corner where I lived versus my elementary school, which was over here. That's not exactly a short distance. So the way this worked is that I was bussed, and I was bussed from, again, over here, just think of where the Home Depot sign is, because that's, uh, I can't zoom out enough, over to Kirk Lane. Kirk Lane is here. No? Ah, that's Kirk. Sorry. Nope, that's too far. That's Forest Hill. Where is Kirk? Oh, there's Kirk Lane. This is Kirk Lane, which has also been bulldozed. Well, you get a theme here. I never actually attended Kirk Lane. I went to after-school care there, though. Um, so every morning, I would take the bus to Kirk Lane, which is relatively close by. So I lived down here. Kirk Lane's up here. So it's at least closer. At the time, it was the closest elementary school. I think now there might actually be one closer. And then from Kirk Lane, I would take another bus over to South Olive, which is over here. And then in the other direction in the afternoon, I'd go from South Olive back to Kirk Lane, stay in after school until my mom got off of work and picked me up, and then went back home. I did that for two years. It was not fun. Um, actually, I did that for more like a year and change. Toward the end of the time, I actually just started doing things after school in South Olive instead, which was a lot better for me because I lost less of my day and significantly worse for my mom, unfortunately. So from there, I went to middle school. Uh, middle school, I went to a place that's over here. Oh, too far. That's Congress anyway. This is Kirk. right here. It's currently called Palm Springs Community Middle School. It was called Jefferson Davis Middle School when I went there, though. Um, on top of the nice, lovely name, one of the older schools in the region, um, it was built on top of an old abandoned barracks, which means there was lead in the soil, and it was built in a floodplain. It's great, let me tell you. Uh, also, the school itself has been turned, again, it used to face Kirk Road rather than facing uh, Forest Hill like it does now. 
and I really hated the commute up here because again, I was coming from way down here, right by where it says Home Depot, all the way up to here. This was not exactly a short commute, especially when I was on the middle part of the bus. So the bus would go out and around and over and on top of it. Um, so you've probably encountered a school bus before. Have you encountered a school bus where the quote unquote proper size of seating is three kids to a seat? Because that's the way it works in South Florida. They decided that they were so overcrowded that they would just redefine what is proper for a bus. Now, three elementary schoolers to a seat is probably possible. Three middle schoolers, where two of them are on the older end of middle school? No, those seats barely fit two adults. And there are no seat belts, of course, or really anything. I definitely have banged my head a couple of times. So, yeah, um, I hated it. Also had to deal with bullies and being shoved out of the seat constantly. So we moved. Uh, that and also I don't think my mom liked where we were living. And we moved down to here. So this is Happiness Street. And we moved right next to Happiness. Right here. So there used to be trees out in front. I don't know what happened to the trees. But let's take a look. Moved right here. So this actually looks very similar to when it did back then. The only difference is there wasn't a fence then. And... There were trees out in front. Um, I remember the trees because I used to tie my bike up to this tree over here until my bike was stolen by somebody snapping the tree. Ugh, idiots. Um, we lived here for a year and a half. I moved my seventh grade year, and we moved in six, yeah, so about a year, year and a half. Um... We basically lived here until the house was sold from underneath when we were living. Again, all rentals. Um, the house was sold. I had my cats here. This is where I loved my kitties. And we had to move again. And I had to lose my kitties. Because there wasn't a place that my mom could move to that accepted cats. I'm still very bitter about that because these were my precious kitties. Now, admittedly, I was terrible when it came to doing litter boxes and so on, and my mom ended up doing it, but I was also 12. Um, also, other memories. So this backyard here, um, let's see, can I get a good view of it from the back? Uh, sort of. It looks like there's people sitting back here having some type of picnic. Um, the dirt in this backyard, the landlord bought the dirt. You can actually see the lovely low quality of litter and dirt back here. Uh, the landlord bought the dirt from a landfill. And just basically took a dump truck and dumped it in the backyard. Again, there were no fences at the time. Um, there were broken glass shards everywhere. There was um, lots of probably polluted stuff. It Again, I did not have a great job growing up. But I lived in this neighborhood. This neighborhood was actually kind of fun to live in. Um, it has a lot of, you know, happiness, rainbow, faith, success, dream... Tangelo, that one doesn't really fit, but Pot of Gold, I remember Pot of Gold Street. Um, I, this area is the area that I basically roamed for a long period of time. I would actually say probably about what you see here. And yeah, there's another elementary school up here. I think this one actually has not been bulldozed. Or if it has, I didn't notice. Um, this area was the area that I generally roamed around playing with friends. Especially at nighttime, I would get into um, nerf battles at night, playing a massive amount of capture the flag or hide and seek with nerf guns. It was a lot of fun back then, but that was only about a year, year and a half before we ended up moving over to here, over to Hairland Drive. Yes, that really does say Hairland. So let me first um, zoom in over to Military Trail, which is this major road here. So this is the road that I lived on. And when you're looking at Military Trail, let me move over to this side. And you look down the road, it doesn't look like the road actually has anything to it. Like, oh, sorry. It looks like it just ends right here, and it doesn't. It actually goes down further. Just seeing. Pastry shop there now. 
this used to be a coffee uh, copy shop that I always stopped by in because my mom worked as a um, bookkeeper on the side and always needed to make copies and I made friends with the people down there I was intending that to be my first job for a long time anyway Hailand Drive actually turns here and you'll notice that this is a dirt road I hated that road so much and so it enters into a quadplex over here and the road turns further drug dealers live there and further down drug dealers live there uh, let's see that's where my friend Vincent lived I knew the owners of this triplex um, she actually lived over here before she died and this triplex here is where I lived specifically I lived in this corner apartment um, this entire area has been completely changed. Um, house being painted, uh, all, apparently all the grass ripped out because there used to be trees and grass and bush and so on. But this is where I lived. Um, I lived here for three and a half years. The place I lived in the longest up until the place I currently live in, for reference. Uh, I, there's a backyard back here that very tree covered. It looks like there might even be like a little dog house type or not dog house but tree house type thing i had i was friends with the person who lived back here he had eventually moved uh, so i got to use a swimming pool and it was very noisy because as you can tell there's a car lot immediately behind there and this is just a dead end road that abruptly ends at this fence here but you can actually cut through and walk along the canal this is a canal for reference uh, you could walk along the canal and reach Haverhill Road back here, which is wider now than it used to be. But yeah, I lived here for about three and a half years, but I didn't really roam. I basically only stayed on Hairland Drive and occasionally down the Sutton Terrace, which Sutton Terrace is a mirror image of Hairland, only the houses were slightly nicer. Um, I lived here for a while. I went to the same middle school. I took, a, I rode a bike to and from middle school, so I would Ride down here, ride down Military Trail along the sidewalk because there's no way in hell I'm going on a damn bike lane in South Florida. Cross Military Trail, then ride down Forest Hill all the way down here, take a turn onto Kirk, and then in. Um, this driveway here is where I got hit by a passenger. And no, I don't mean I was hit. I hit a passenger. I got hit by a passenger. <sighs> anyway. This is going really long. I guess I'm just going to talk about my childhood. I'll deal with the adult stuff later. <coughs> and, well, I lived here for a long time. I never really explored. Because the more times that I moved in my life, the less I wanted to go out and meet people and go out and talk to people. Because, why? I'm just going to move again. It's depressing, but that's kind of the way I saw things. And not wrong. Anyway. Uh, oh, the deli in. Um, from here, the triplex got sold out from underneath my mom. And the new owners raised rent by nearly double. So we needed to move badly. And my mom was getting tired of constantly moving around. And I don't blame her. Constantly moving around is terrible. But... She eventually found some government programs, and with the assistance of her brother, we ended up moving again. And by this point, uh, this would have been 2000 is when we moved. And I knew I was going to be going off to college. I was even starting to look at where I wanted to go to college and so on. I hadn't applied yet, but I was still looking generally. So I knew I wasn't going to be here for very long. So I had even less attachment to this place. Naturally, this is the place that my mom lived in for um, 20 years at this point. Um, it's over here. Yep, that is actually my mom's vehicle. So this is where my mom lives now. Uh, I was going, oh, I didn't even show um, my high school. Actually, here it is. 
John I. Leonard High School. Once more, bulldozed. The high school used to be here, and then the track and stuff was over here. But this is where I went to school. Not very far away from where I lived, but far enough where I wasn't walking to school in South Florida Heat. So, yeah, my mom just dropped me off every day. It was only there for about a year. Uh, yeah. It's there for about a year. Not particularly fondly memory. So, before I had explored up and down the block, and that was basically my range. In this case, I stopped exploring entirely. I just didn't bother meeting anybody on the block. Turns out there was actually a kid at my school that even knew who I was that lived down here, but I didn't know it at the time. I basically just stayed in the house. Um, around the time is when I moved is when my depression started very heavily hitting, and I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to exist to speak of. And the last thing I wanted to do was get stuck. So I kept trying to stay after school. I really, I basically just didn't want to do anything. Also, down here was not an empty area. This used to be a set of houses that were known for prostitution. I, again, I basically have lived in slums for a good chunk of my childhood. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, that was my childhood. Uh, how long am I on the recording? 37 minutes. Uh, I'll at least cover college and that's about it. So, from here, I applied to colleges. I applied to one college that is over here. This is University of South Florida, which is in Tampa. University of Central Florida, which is in Orlando. I had attempted to apply for University of Florida, which is in Gainesville, but there was a free computer outage on the last night of applications, and I was still working on my application, thus it never got in. I also applied to the Stevens Institute, which is in Hoboken, which is over here. Where's it at? It's on the New Jersey side, but I don't remember exactly where. I don't know New Jersey very well. I don't know Jersey. Uh, anyway, it's over here somewhere. It's probably on the map, and I'm just not seeing it. Doesn't matter. And then I also applied to a tiny little school up here in the northeast corner of Indiana called Tri-State. It's now called Trine, but I think it's Trine. And this is the university. Um, specifically, this area was the university. Not even this entire building, just this area. So this is Conrad, Allwood, and I don't uh, Death. Building, 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 building. Those were our dorms. Um, there was another dorm here. This has been torn down since then and rebuilt. And those were all of our dorms initially. Um, they eventually built villas over here, which I moved into later on. And yeah, this didn't exist. This didn't exist. These existed. This didn't exist. Oh, wow, they actually tore down the golf course? Huh. There used to be a, um, whatchamacallit, a clubhouse there, and the gymnasium, which the gym is still there. And then some of these buildings have been redesigned and so on, but yeah. It looks like they have a second coffee shop now. Hmm. This was the building that I had most of my classes in, best, best hall of science. Um, they added on an extension to the building, which is what's over here. But otherwise, yeah, this is basically where I went to school and lived for um, basically what you see in this area I lived in for five years. It's the longest I've stayed in one general area, in fact, up until uh, this year. Um, I really liked the villas outside of the fact that they were constantly falling apart. I lived in this villa and also this villa. I don't remember the exact villa over here now. It might have been one of these. Anyway, I lived in two of these villas. And yeah, everything else has been kind of my adulthood, which I actually classify as graduating from college rather than while I'm in college. 
college was really more like an extension of high school where I was away from my parents. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and call this here because it's late and I need sleep. I'll let you have the nice zoomed in look while I end it. Good night, internet. Good kitten. I'll see you next time.